Let's do this thing. The natural world impresses our imagination with the beauty, order, and wildness. Over millennia, these lasting impressions form a network of stabilizing forms that the philosopher Plato called archetypes. By means of the archetypal image, natural phenomena present faces that speak to the imagining soul. There is nothing more personal than apprehending the nature of the archetypal force on our personal life. Otherwise, we tend to take life personally and suffer needlessly. Behind this blue door, we take a look at what the personal dross and confusion is in life and sort through for archetypal gold. But then comes the awareness that images are independent of subjectivity and even of the imagination itself as a mental activity. Images come and go as in dreams at their own will, undetermined by personal psychodynamics, from James Hillman. Allow these images to register, paying attention to what comes up for you. Archetypes are ambivalent. Without humans, there are no gods. Or is there a corollary with the invisible dark energy force? Are archetypes the god particle, the Higgs boson of the imagination? What makes an impression last? A stack of concrete blocks versus Van Gogh's starry night? Archetypes as independent forms draw us towards them. George Lucas studied the Jungian playbook, realizing that the force is strong, conveying such archetypes as hero, journey, Shadow, lover. When they mention your name, our houses out there in the wind creak again in the storm. And I lean from our play wherever I am to you, quiet at the edge of that town. All the world is blowing away. It is almost daylight. Are you warm? The deep heavens stand before him full of shapes. Give his light hands nothing to hold of your burdens. Otherwise, they'll come at night to you to test you with a fiercer grip and go like someone angry through your house and seize you as if they'd created you and break you out of your mold. We spiral down to find that more than a faculty, imagination is also one of the great archetypes like love, order, beauty, justice, time. We sense these principles coursing through our veins and even hold their reins in our hands, yet they are also beyond us and never in our hands. Who is she and what is she presenting? This is important. The mind is in the imagination rather than the imagination in the mind. It is not we who imagined, but we who are imagined. Archetypal images call us to the other side of life, from literal to psychological to the third realm, archetypal. From type to stereotype to archetype, from happenstance to coincidence to synchronicity, from matter to dark matter to dark energy. Giddy up. The fall must happen before one learns how to ride. Our persona crashes just in time to take the ride of our life. Psyche is starving. She's being fed too much junk data, too much information. She wants to savor images, linger with beauty, and feast on the mysterious food of the imagination. Puella, the eternal girl archetype, brings sweetness, joy, laughter, commotion, beauty to our world. Without Excuse me, unhinged from social decorum, these girls abandon all their senses without caution to the delight of a summer evening. The eternal girl and boy animates life. I was struck while visiting New York City that this image of a Senex, the unmovable one, and his dragons keep watch in front of the Dakota building in Central Park. They stare down at the sidewalk where John Lennon was murdered. Senex, like Kronos, plays no, fa no favorite. Time marches on. This sculpture by Rodin, entitled Citizens, shows us the burden carried by the common man, bearing the weight of the literal world on their shoulders. Yet it is only in community that our creative imagination is put into play, like here. The wise old man looks into our soul and suppose psychology were really a practice, not a field of understanding or meaning, but a way a way of living, a way of seeing, 
a way of hearing, a way of responding, a way of sensing the gods in the world. Crossroad, cross to bear, cross purposes, double crossed, cross section. Once the irrelevant is passed, we cross over into the sublime mystery of the world of images, idola in Greek, the root word for ideas, refreshed from the weight of our obsessions. Whose world is it anyway? Power, dominance, commerce, hubris, tower of I want it. Permanent impressions that endure in our imagination dream us into form. There is another kind of tablet, one already completed and preserved inside you, a spring box overflowing its source. James Hillman, my mentor and founder of Archetypal Psychology, who I've quoted liberally tonight, writes in his book, A Terrible Love of War, about the timeless force of war in the human imagination. At war with others, within ourselves, the warrior protects boundaries or uses power for its own sake. Where is your warrior? O oh, devouring mother, day of the dead madre, tell us a story like the girls recited to one another. You know, the passage about the mythical bird that spends its life searching for the perfect thorn and then impales itself while singing the world's most beautiful song. And what are you hiding? It's time. Are these universal, indelible images a consequence of repetition within the collective human experience amassed over the ages? Or are these archetypal patterns independent of human nature and accessed through our creative imagination? Dream the pre-dawn gold dream and find out.